So medicine is constantly changing. Wilderness medicine also. So we're going to address some changes that have occurred over the last two and a half years since I've started doing this YouTube channel that can directly impact you and help you down the road. One's going to be a little esoteric because we're going to be talking about snake bites and always bring some attention. First, we're going to talk about changes on ankle sprains or sprains in general. And should you use ice? So last week I had a patient. Guy had a very bad sprained ankle. It was not fractured, but between a grade two, grade three, there was definitely ligaments torn. I'm consulting with an orthopedic surgeon, and he's alerted me to that ice is no longer the number one treatment intervention. I'm like, what? Really? Why is that? And he directed me to a bunch of research studies, and I've been digging in. And even the latest addition to Field Guide in Wilderness Medicine does not address that. It's going to take the internet some time to catch up. So if you Google it, you're still going to find things that are going to say ice it. It used to be rice, you know, rest, ice, the compression, elevate. Well, that's totally been changed. And if you're out in the outdoors and you sprain your ankle, this is kind of good. You don't have to carry a bag around that you break and it gets cold right away. You still need to elevate it. But they found that the inflammation that occurs from the injury actually improves our recovery time by approximately two to three days. And it's pretty impressive. The body heals well. I mean, I got 90-year-olds that come in, and they're very alert. They're on no meds. And it's amazing over time what the body can do. So what are, what are the changes? We're not doing ice anymore for our sprains. And if you're out there and you're hunting, you're hiking, you're in the outdoors, you don't need to do that. So they came up with the acronym PEACE, PEACE OUT. And P is protection, um, E is elevate, A is avoid anti-inflammatories, C is compression, and E is education. Uh, personally, I think it's a really funky acronym. I mean, clearly you're going to educate and talk to, but what you need to do in the outdoors is you want to protect the spring, splint it. We've got tons of videos. I'll put those at the end. You want to wrap it and have compression, and you can put wet heat on it. It's not a problem. Well, boil some water, take a rag, and you put some wet heat on the ankle or whatever it is. It's not going to have a thing. If you're still icing, not a big deal. It really isn't. It's not going to cause harm. It's just going to probably shave two or three days as far as the treatment. And it's back, I've been doing this for 40 years. I've been using ice. Everybody's done well, but maybe they're going to do a little better now. And I've got these studies here that I'm going to show you. One's from the, the British Journal, I think, of Medicine. There's another one from the Washington Post. There's another one on the National Institute of Health. They're all saying, you know, ice probably shouldn't go with it. So that's the update on the ice issue and the first aid changes with sprains, strains, and even fractures to some degree. And, oh, I wanted to tell you that even in professional football, they're moving away from ice. Watch, pay attention the next time you see a player pull off to the sidelines. They are doing ice baths, which are different and for a different issue, but something to bring up. Uh, on the uh, football field there. Pay attention the next time you watch a game. Okay, next issue, snake bites, changes. I brought this up about a year and a half ago. I'm watching TikTok videos. There's a guy in Utah hunting. I think he's hunting elk, not really sure. And he gets bit by a timber rattlesnake, a crotalid, the, that side species of snakes. Those are cottonmouths and those are timber rattlesnakes. Uh, pygmy rattlesnakes, misaguas, uh, copperheads, water moccasins, a whole bit. And you see him in his truck. He's actually getting a police escort. <laughs> I mean, snake bites. They get tons of attention, I'm telling you. And this guy has his leg elevated in the car, and he has a tourniquet on him. Okay. So we're not doing tourniquets. You know that. So that's not changed. That's been there for years. No tourniquets on snake bites, please. But he has it elevated. And that was a smart move. It was probably inadvertent. Maybe not. Maybe they called in to the hospital and they told him to do that. 
It used to be thought that if you got bit on an extremity, that you keep it at the same level or lower it. That has been changed. You want to elevate the extremity. The reason why that is is because it decreases pain and decreases swelling. It used to be thought that it would disseminate venom and you would get worse quicker. That has been absolutely disproven. Just like if you get stung by a bee, you've got to take a, a credit card and scrape the stinger out because if you grab it, you'll get more venom in your system. Bunch of crap. So you don't have to do that. So elevate a snake bite. God forbid you get bit. Specifically, we're talking about pit vipers. We're not talking about the coral snake. Those are your end of the year medical updates. Okay, keep your eyes on the rise and your face to the wind. We'll see you next time.